Welcome back to the shop and to the channel. Getting back to work here on the KT 2HL. As you can see, I'm getting the knee cleaned and prepped for the feed distribution unit. Just as I have done on other parts of the machine, I'm using some Permatex as a sealer to help prevent any kind of oil leaks. With the uh, Permatex now on the knee surface, I can bring in the feed uh, distribution unit. I have this on the end of my engine hoist cherry picker. I've also got a ratchet strap hooked up to help keep it level um, as I get it into the knee so the shafts and the gears will line up a little easier. The first bit that has to fit in is this splined input shaft that comes off of the uh, power feed bracket on the back of the knee. I have to line this up with the uh, cross feed bracket that's under the saddle and get it through those brass telescoping tubes. Once I get it in here, at least part way, I should be able to use the saddle crank to pull the feed distribution unit into the knee. The trouble is I'm having some difficulty actually getting everything to line up. I'm trying to maneuver this spline input shaft so it slides into that uh, cross feed bracket. It looks like I have it in far enough now that I can start feeding it into the nut on the saddle. And it's in here close enough to where these rods that I originally made for the transmission, I reuse them here on the feed distribution unit, should come in handy to help keep everything level as I push this thing a little further in. Oh crap. Might even be able to put those in. <laughs> it was at this moment he knew. He f***ed up. Yeah, this is where I realized I messed up. I forgot to put in these feed trip rods first before nope. I started feeding the feed distribution unit <sighs> into the knee. Yeah, so the feed distribution unit needs to come out at least far enough for me to get those trip rods into the uh, holes on the side of the knee. Now it's kind of a matter of me trying to juggle these trip rods to get them to fit into the holes in the knee and at the same time resting on top of the cogs that tie them in into the power feed levers for the saddle and the knee. And then it's right about here, I realized I waited too long to put on one of these saddle um, stop blocks. 
because it needs to be on the other side of the trip stud that comes out of the bottom of the saddle. It's easily remedied by removing the trip stud and moving it aside uh, and then reinstalling the trip stud. But it would have saved me a little bit of hassle had I remembered that before I got this far into the knee. Now that the feed distribution box now is in uh, a fair way into the knee, the input spline shaft is in the cross feed bracket, the lead screw is into the nut, uh, I've got the guide rods here to keep it a little straighter. I can remove this strap that I put on there just to keep it level while I was inserting it. The feed unit's also in far enough now that I no longer need the lifting strap and the engine hoist. I won't need these lifting brackets anymore. Um, I need to get them out of the way for the mounting screws. As this goes further into the knee, I need to pay attention to these trip rods here. Uh, they keep coming off of the cogs, and that'll create quite a bit of problems if they're not lined up just right uh, as this thing goes into the knee. I'm getting right to the end here it looks like it's pulling the saddle forward doesn't look like it's making any more progress going into the knee I did notice that the trip rods are not uh, sitting into the holes on the back of the knee once I get those lined up this should go all the way into the knee it should seat in there The trip rods are in their spots, so I'm trying to figure out just where the issue is. I'm trying to push the saddle back a little further so I have some room to work with because it's pulling it so hard it's actually um, pulling it past the saddle clamp, which is, which is odd. Well, I've taken off the bolts that hold on the telescoping tube that covers the power feed input shaft. I think what's happening here is those splines need to line up with the gears inside this power feed uh, bracket, and I think they're not lining up. So I took off those brass uh, uh, tubes in order to try to rotate the power feed input shaft manually while I try to crank the saddle lead screw in and get this to go in the rest of the way. I temporarily have the rapid traverse lever on here and I'm spinning the input pulley by hand and it looks like I do have those splines lined up. We should be good here. Well, that seemed to do the trick. I got those splines lined up, and now this is uh, feeding in a little bit further. Still a little stuck on something right here. Well, that last little bit was being hung up by the trip dog. It came out of the socket there on the left. So I'll start in a couple of the socketed cap screws in the front just to make sure things are lined up and now I should be able to turn the saddle feed and close this gap.
Well, before I can install the feed worm bracket on the side of the knee, I need to remake this gasket or this shim that was originally on there when I took it apart. Now this isn't shown in the parts manual and I'm not exactly sure what its purpose is, but it's a 10 thousandths thick stainless steel shim um, that somebody put on here for a reason. I'll use the old one as a template to mark where the holes and where this needs to be cut out. The easiest way I have ever found to drill holes in sheet metal is by using one of these step drills. So I've got it in my drill press here with a block of wood underneath it. That's where the smoke is coming from. And I'll go ahead and, and drill out the holes for the mounting bolts as well as the locating dowel pins. And then to cut out the center section, I'm just going to use a Dremel with a cutoff disc. To get rid of any of the sharp uh, edges and to clean up the um, contour of this knockout, I've got a grinding stone on my Dremel and that should be able to uh, shape these things to where it won't interfere with any of the internal workings. I still have a little bit more I need to clear away uh, to where it won't uh, interfere with that raised boss on the inside of the bracket. With all of the holes drilled and the center piece cut out, I'll use the bracket itself to outline the outside of the shim and then I'll just cut it out with some tin snips. Of course I have to put on a little bit of Permatex. The Permatex also helps keep the shim in place. I'll also put Permatex on the face of the bracket so that both sides of the shim are sealed. And this is located on the side of the knee with a couple of dowel pins and held on there with uh, three Philister head screws. Well, the next piece I can put on now is the vertical trip lever, or can I? Um, it doesn't look like I can hmm. get this on with those trip rods in the I'm way. Well, something's not quite right here because I know before I took this I thing off before I took out the feed I? unit. So I'm thinking maybe I just need to get that stop block out of the way and it should go on. Okay, that's much better. I can breathe now. For a minute there, I honestly thought I was going to have to pull this whole daggone thing back out in order to get this one little lever on. And this lever is held on with this collar and a taper pin. Well, I figure while I'm over here, I can go ahead and reinstall the knee clamps. There's two of them. One here is at the top. It uh, consists of a, a long Philister head screw and then a lever that it screws into. Once I get this almost tight, I want to seat the screw with this set screw. There's some flats on the big screw that once this is tight will keep it from moving. And that way the lever then threads on a little bit further on that screw, which is what tightens the gib up into the dovetail. Well, with everything tightened down and secure, it's time for a test run. I'm 
just giving it a quick look over to see if I notice any kind of leaks, any kind of oil running anywhere. I don't see anything. Well, let's see how the power feed works here. We'll try to raise the knee here with the rapid traverse. That's going smooth. Sounds right. Up works. Does down work? Down works. That's a good sign. Let's do the same test here with the saddle. We'll try in. Yep, that looks good. And the other way... We'll be out. Yeah, that looks real good. I'm, I'm pretty excited here now. Well, I'll go ahead and turn the spindle on and we'll check the speeds and feeds here. I've got it set for one half inch per minute. And it's kind of hard to tell, but you can see the graduated dial for the saddle is spinning with the power feed. We'll crank it up to 20 inches per minute. Takes a little bit for those gears to mesh. I am getting some strange behavior here. It doesn't seem to want to mesh uh, right away in the 20 inches per minute speed. It's a little bit tight to move it away from that. Um, I know you're, you should be able to spin this while the spindle is moving. That is in the manual to do that, but for whatever reason on a couple of these it is not meshing real nice. Most of these feeds are working just fine. It seems there are just a couple of them. Um, I, I guess for the most part, I'm not really all that surprised that there might be some issues with it. Uh, the gears themselves looked okay, but I, there was only so much that I could see as far as how the uh, speed change operates um, without it being in the knee. And I was reluctant to try to monkey with it too much because not knowing how to retime them properly would have completely screwed up this entire dial. So. Most of this seems to be working as I would expect, but this might take a, a little bit of finagling from time to time to get it to uh, mesh properly with those that with the selected speed. And while I'm at it, I might as well go ahead and test the trip dogs for the saddle. I've got them set pretty close so I can see them operate and that it is definitely kicking the handle out. Well, not everything went as smooth as silk and there's probably going to be some kinks I'm going to need to work out. But... I think I'm going to call it a wrap for this video. Uh, thank you again for watching. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber and if you'd like to support the channel in other ways to help me continue to do more of these, there's some links in the description. Again, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.